Welcome back to GCN Racing. Today was stage 19 of the Tour de France. Yesterday, Nairo Quintana showed us all that he is still one of the best climbers in the world, storming up the Galibier and down the descent into Valois and taking his third career stage victory at the Tour. In the GC battle, Alaphilippe conceded some time on the Galibier, but descended like a demon to get back onto the group of favourites and defend his yellow jersey. One step close to Paris, one step closer to being the first French Tour winner in 34 years. Today though, he'll have another battle on his hands, the second of three consecutive stages in the high mountains of the Alps. This one featured the highest point in the race, the Col de Lizarat, 13 kilometers long at 7.5%, with the top at 2,770 meters above sea level. A long descent afterwards, and then a mountaintop finish on the Monte de Tigny. Like yesterday, it was a very aggressive start to the stage. Four of the best climbers in the race would form the first significant break. Nibali, Bilbao and Harada, along with Dan Martin, who took the points on the first KOM of the day. The big news though from the first half of the stage was this. Thibaut Pino, who started the day in fifth place on the GC, back at the race doctor's car for treatment on a tall muscle in his thigh. Meanwhile, up front, a larger group had formed. Highest on GC there were Uran and Valverde, ninth and 10th on GC respectively, and both within six minutes of the yellow jersey. This was utterly heartbreaking to watch. Thibaut Pino in tears, consoled by his teammate William Bonnet as he stopped, got off his bike, into his team car, and exited the Tour de France. It's been a race of incredible highs and lows for the Frenchman this year, but that one's going to hurt for a long time to come. Here's the highest point of this year's race, the Col de Lizarin, the scene of some epic battles over the years, and this year would be no different. With 7Ks to the summit, Nibali was on the front riding for teammate Caruso in the KOM competition, but the gap to the yellow jersey group was coming down quickly. And that's because Team Ineos had hit the front. They realised that if they were to crack Alaphilippe, they'd need to go early, and they'd soon isolated him, Henrik Mass unable to stick with his leader. Quintana too was paying for his efforts of yesterday, he'd lose touch with the yellow jersey group with 7Ks to the top, and then this happened. Geraint Thomas launching an attack with 6Ks to the summit, Alaphilippe initially unable to follow. That acceleration spelt the end for Roman Bardet, there'd be no KOM points for him at the top of the climb. Thomas was caught though, and it was Kreisweit who was the next to go, with the gradient reaching 11%. Thomas did claw his way back up, but Alaphilippe was on his limit, and perhaps over it. He'd start to lose big chunks of time. Then more drama at the front. Egan Bernal launching his own attack from the GC group. Kreisweig unable to follow. Thomas stuck exactly where he was. It was never huge, the gap to Bernal versus the GC riders just behind, but it did balloon to Alaphilippe. With still a couple of cases at the top, this man was the virtual leader on the road. And how talented is he? Just 22 years old, only his second Grand Tour. One by one, he distanced all the riders from the break that he'd caught, eventually even cracking Simon Yates. By the top, he'd have almost two minutes in advantage over Alaphilippe and close to a minute of his teammate Thomas with Kreisweig in that group behind. But are you ready for some more drama? On the descent, there was a freak snow slash hailstorm which hit it. Snow plows were quickly on the scene and did their best to clear the road, but it was so violent that it caused a landslide and they had no choice but to cancel the stage. Alaphilippe visibly frustrated as he heard the news on race radio, as was Simon Yates, who was looking to take his third stage win. Basically, there was confusion all round with the riders, understandably in some ways, since there was still glorious weather at this point on the stage. It's been a Tour de France like no other this year, and with one huge mountain stage still to come, you get a distinct impression that anything still could happen. I can't remember another time quite like this. Stages have been previously shortened, but never cancelled midway through. I think there was a mixture of disappointment and relief amongst riders at different ends of the race. Discussion going on between Geraint Thomas and Vincenzo Nibali here, who are both clearly not too unhappy with the situation. When you see this though, you can see that they really did have no choice but to cancel the stage. One of the last men to actually stop racing was Rigoberto Uran, but as ever, he seemed in good spirits as he climbed into the team car. Uh, this is race director Christian Prudhomme chatting with Geraint Thomas. In the end, after some discussion, it was decided that the times for the stage would be taken on the top of the Col de Lizaran, but without any timing equipment up there, it would take hours for the result to be announced. Eventually we got it though, no stage winner today, but here is the new general classification. 
Still only the top five there as we record this, but it's Egan Bernal who is the new leader of the Tour de France. 45 seconds in front of Julien Alaphilippe who slipped down to second. Geraint Thomas in third at 1 minute and 3 seconds. Kreisweit there in fourth at 1.15 and Emmanuel Buchmann up to fifth at 1 minute and 42. Tomorrow it's the final day in the mountains and the highest mountaintop finish of this year's race. Ever so slightly longer than today's stage at 130 kilometers. They'll start the Corme de Roseland after just 15 k's, climbing 1,250 meters in 20 kilometers. But it's the final climb that's the real beast. Val Touren, a whopping 33.4 kilometers long, only 5% average, but with the steepest section at the top, which peaks at 2,365 meters above sea level, it could create some big gaps. It's the last chance for the GC riders to join us again tomorrow to see what happened. Another reminder now to click on the subscribe button if you haven't done so already, and on the bell icon. That way you'll be notified every time we put one of our racing videos up. See you tomorrow.